Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the show. Guess what? It's raining. So let's show a bit of that. So this morning, I took the three-wheeler for a ride and wrecked it in a tree. And I just dusted the tree off the three-wheeler, and that's good to go. So anyway, today we're taking a break from the Tacoma project which I got to put the tie rod on and the bolt for the shock. I might have to disassemble them, some things to go backwards to make everything out. Anyway, you'll find out more in the video. So today, and let me insert a picture right here. This is a, oh man. I might have to come back here and read some things off. It is a jet ski 550 JS 550A is the model number of the stand up ski that it's from and it's got an engine noise so <clears throat> I've just come back from the hardware store. Don't ask me why I got all this stuff in my pocket but anyway <clears throat> these three are for the puller. I got the motor upside down. It's a 552 stroke Kawasaki unit and it is water exhausted and water tighted like these bulkhead fittings and this massive alloy cap to make everything water tighted. So they are water tighted for um, use in salt water. So the problem we've got is we've got great compression. The engine turns over freely for the most part. But this is a 1980s stand-up ski. So I'm thinking it, and it is beautiful with very low hours. So I'm thinking there's only a few possibilities. The engine itself has got very little wear, but there is one thing that does wear um, without use, and that would be the rubber bits. So like this rubber cap here, that's fairly supple still. But this seal here is in contact with gas vapors. So I'm thinking maybe the seal dried out and allowed air to kind of flush the oil and gas mixture off of the ball bearing inside. Or maybe even on this end as well. There actually are, there's a little bit of weeping. I'm not sure how to think about that. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to think about that. But anyway... We are most suspicious of the bottom end and the bearings because of the good compression. So I'm thinking maybe the separators came out of the balls that separate the balls and they're making them jam up. Maybe it's also a connecting rod, one of the needle bearings in that, maybe getting crosswise with itself. Anyway, there isn't any machining in the bottom end, so that's good. So we're going to try and get leave the pistons in the jugs and just pull the pins out if that's possible. Maybe it's not possible. Um... We have to see how everything separates itself. So we have a separation line here and here. So I'm not sure I'll be able to reach all the way in and pull the pins, but I might be able to. So, um, yeah, exploration, and we got to pull the flywheel first to get at it. So we're going to pull the flywheel, disassemble some things, and then come back and see what's up. All right, guys, so here's what it looks like. I'm also going to try and save this video for posteriority so we have seal uh, metal washer bearing and then bearing this divider thing i'm not sure it's got this pin on it bearing bearing again and then two seals two seals and the steel separators behind both seals pretty cool that's that <clears throat> All right, we're trying to access the wrist pins, but we got some stuff off. We got the big intake off. We got the head off. And, wow. So much corrosion everywhere. So, that's exhaust, I mean. Here's a lot more corrosion. So, that's not relatively good. 
I don't think it's hurt anything. I think it just means we need to clean it all off. So the next step is to try and split the case right about here. And then we're going to push the cylinder head up until we can get the wrist pins out. Because that's what I'm after. Um, we could check the cylinder liners for scoring. I don't really see anything indicative of where. But you can... There's some free play somewhere. So I'm pretty suspect of the wrist pin. So we're going to... I did put the bottom of the case back on just to not have the crank fall out. So... I think we can just pry it apart here and it'll come apart and we pop the wrist pins out and then take a look at the bearing so let's do that now <clears throat> all right here we are we got the head off exhaust off and here's the rod bearings and they're pretty sludgy the rod bearings are i don't see any evidence of binding this guy here is pretty clean This guy here is definitely dirtier. We got sludge everywhere, including the oil galleries to the bottom end. So anyway, now we can flip the block and pull the bottom off and get the crank out and really get into these bottom bearings. Maybe this engine just needs a cleaning. I don't really know yet, but we're going to figure that out. Okay, guys, welcome back. So... <sighs> I've been a little bit sporadic on the videos, so keep up the encouragement. I've all hey, it's in the middle of the night. Look at this intake manifold. Go oven cleaner. Here, watch what comes out. Unfreaking believable. This one's looking pretty nice. Anyway. I spent $120 getting all of this steam clean at the repair shop at Greenlight Products. I got screwed. Here I am doing it at night all by myself. That's the way it always worked, eh? So here's the engine put together. Here's the engine with some stickers. We're in Geneva on Lake Seneca. Got the head man Dennis at the wheel. Testing out the rebuild jet ski engine, Kawasaki uh, 550. So we took the engine block over to Rich Daly at Dinoport and had him hone the bore and inspect the engine. Came back home, got Winterosa gasket set and SBT pistons with DLC crown and side coatings. Basically, the bottom end was fine. We resealed everything with the anaerobic gasket maker that Jim Daly recommended us to use and kept the rings according to the packaging that came with the SBT pistons. So, Jim Daly, the mad scientist, took one look at the pistons and saw that there was a lot of carbon burnt to the top of them and said, 
So you guys are using Clot's bean oil. Stop using Clot's bean oil. Go buy it from Walmart. Because the lighter TC3, like Walmart sells, will burn off the piston instead of coking up and causing compression loss. Like what happened with this jet ski, seeing as it uses cold uh, lake water to cool and burns a lot colder than the uh, snowmobile would. Let's just say he's being careful because he doesn't want to fall in the water. Because baby, it's cold out here. <laughs> yeah, yo. All right. Oh yeah. Uh oh. So want some throttle? No, oh, there it is. Woo. So he told me a little bit later on when he came back in that he had to turn the gas tank over to reserve. That was the reason that it had a little bit of a hard start at that time. So that's what he did when he left the dock there. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. God bless each of you and your families. Pray for us, and we'll see you in the next video.